NCAA athletics. Now time for the opening tip-off presented by U.S. Cellular, proud to be the official wireless sponsor of the Black Bears. As Brian Stack will Sandy Thomas with you. Coming from inside the Duncan broadcast booth, UMaine runs on Duncan. Black Bears win the tip and they are underway. Of course, we talked about the starting lineup for the Bears. Bukasin Masich, Deshante Wright McLeish, Steph Ingo, Chris Efertui, and also Max Klonczak. First jumper no good. And here come the Vermont Catamounts. A little bit of a different look for them as well. Cam Gibson, Isaiah Powell, Finn Sullivan, Ben Shungu, and Ryan Davis out there in their starting five. No Justin Mazzula here for today's contest. Sandy, let's look at the main keys to victory to pull off what would be a pretty significant upset for them. Well, it would be for sure, Brian, but the keys to victory for UMaine, that first game they lost 68 to 81. You've got to get four to five players in double figures, a balanced scoring attack, and they've got to win the rebound battle. In the first game, Vermont had 32 rebounds to Maine's 21. They've got to protect the paint. In the first game, Vermont had 52 points in the paint to Maine's 18, and they got to get to the free throw line. Vermont shot 22 free throws in that first game. Maine only shot four. Effortui picks up the foul on the offensive side of things, so the Catamounts will have their second opportunity. Speaking of the Catamounts, Sandy, what do they need to do to wrap up quite a historic conference slate? Well, as they look at that stat from the first game, 52 points in the paint, I would say pound the ball inside, that's for sure. They've got to get transition and capitalize off turnovers. In the first game, they had 19 points off Maine's 13 turnovers. They've got to win the battle of the boards, as we mentioned before. Vermont had 32 to Maine's 21. they got to stick their threes. In the first game, Vermont was only 3 for 12 in that first game to Maine's 14 for 26. Maine shot 58% from the three-point line. Here's the ball being pulled down the court by Gibson. Black Bears bringing their bigs out to the top of the key. Now swung around Powell. That's going to be a kick save and a butte by Jashante Wright McLeish. So 2 0 after the first basket drops for Powell, the senior from Albany, New York. In that first game, um, Powell is actually number two in America East in rebounds. He's also number seven in assists and number 18 in minutes played, and he's averaging nine points per game and 6.4 rebounds per game. Shungu gets the one to drop, going the left side of the lane. Black Bears don't have anyone in the backcourt as Max Glonchek finally gets bailed out by Vukas and Masic. And here he comes crossing the timeline. Catamounts with an early four zip lead. You mentioned the last game though, Sandy, on the 29th of January. Maine actually played quite respectably well watching that game down the stretch as another missed opportunity for the Black Bears on the floater. But again, Vermont just so deep, so strong. And you've got two players who arguably could be player of the year candidates as Ryan Davis likely the front runner but Ben Shung who definitely needs some looks. Well Maine in that first game shot 48 percent from the floor and that's not bad shooting. They shot 53 percent uh, from the three-point line. They only shot 50 percent because they only took two they were two for four from the free throw line. Maine's got to get to the free throw line. They've, they've struggled with that all year just shooting maybe single digit free throws. Into effort two a little shoulder bump can't get the little baby jumper to drop. And that's a nice rebound by Powell. So baskets already for Davis, Shungu, and also Powell up until this point. Here's the drive in. Speaking of Powell, the block from the senior Efratui, who swats it away. Masic to Klonchek. That's his spot right there. He'll front rim that, but it'll be a push off on Steph Ingo. So the second foul by the Black Bears of the contest. Yeah, Klonchek is another one of those great shooters that we can tell as we see Vermont going in and getting it blocked there. But Clance Check is one of those kind of shooters that if it's not leaving his hand correctly, it, you, can, you can tell it's not going in. But he's got the right form and technique. It, he doesn't miss. We see the first appearance from Peter Filipovic as he checks in. The Hungarian, a sophomore, played one season for Utah State Eastern. Another block this time. Ingo, second chance opportunity, no good. And another block. That's two for for Ingo as Maine now has three, but they work it in wide open and flushed home by Ryan Davis who now has four. Yeah, they just keep, they just kept pounding it in, pounding it in, and that's where they get their 52 points in the, in the paint. Talked about it before, Sandy, historic season already for Vermont, matching their America East win total high with 16. Of course, they're playing a total of 18. The lone loss they had though was without Finn Sullivan and that man who just threw one down in Ryan Davis. Launch check, feeds in, Filipovic off the window and in, and Maine finally on the board. Yeah, that's a great, great assist. 
John, John Becker's teams have consistently, we talked about this a little bit earlier, they, his teams play like like a machine. Yeah. They're just so methodical as they run their half-course sets. Prince, too, like the American East, maybe not as well known as the ACC, uh, but uh, Vermont definitely the class so far of this of this league. Yeah, Vermont has been pretty consistent, especially since John Becker's, and although Tom Brennan had some great seasons there at Vermont as well, but again, they've been pretty consistent. Uh, they've led this conference. As they've been the quality program that everybody else has been chasing after. Both free throws good for Davis. He's up to six points in this contest of the 10 put on the board by the Catamounts. Of course, they're getting ready for their weekend tilt. Still don't know their opponent as of yet. It could be UMass Lowell, could be NGIT. Of course, there's one more game left after today's tilts. It'll be UMass Lowell taking on Hartford down in Connecticut. That's a miss by Ada Turgut, who just checked in for the Black Bears. And quickly moving is Shungu. Drops it off. Gibson drives and darts. Another block this time to Shante Wright McLeish, but will stay with the Cats. And those are good jobs on the blocks, but Maine cannot continue to allow Vermont to get into that paint. Shungu misses that one. He's got two points. He's nearing that 1,000 point mark. Not sure if he's going to get it here today. He needs 28 more. Target has that one hang up, but will not find its way through the cylinder. Blackbeard still held to two points in this contest. Yeah, Shungu is a preseason all conference, as well as Davis. Here's Finn Sullivan in his first season after transferring from San Diego, named Player of the Week back on the 17th of January. Catamounts were happy to have him back from injury, as well as that young man, Ryan Davis, though, missing that little baby hook. Here's Mosic, spots up for three, and buries it. Bukasin Mosic with the long range, range tray, and Maine cuts the deficit to five. Yeah, he knew that was going in for sure. Mosic, number six in the American East, and the six at three per game. He's really the only main player that's in the top 15 uh, in the stats anywhere on the America East. Some trouble there from Powell, cross court pass. This one no good, back iron. Filipovic uh, will lose that one and then it's knocked away. Kind of a little bit of a skirmish there underneath. Now here's Filipovic, the up and under, won't get it to drop, rebounds pulled down. Powell now running and gunning. Maine did a good scramble on that turnover, but couldn't finish. And then the almost steal from Deshante Wright McLeish. Now the tray attempt. Front rims, but bounces home. The hometown roll from the road trip. And that is up and through for Shungu with five now. 13 to five the score. Eight point advantage for the Catamounts on the road. And that's a miscommunication as Masich is intending to get it to the forward target underneath, but skies it. Shungu for Vermont, Catamounts had 19 points and three rebounds. He was 11 for 12 from the free throw line in Maine's first game. A Little bit of a guard change here. Maine currently has six players on the court though. Not sure who's coming out, but it'll be Shante Wright McLeish. Masich had checked out. Deshante didn't get the memo at that point, <laughs> but uh, we'll see the first appearance from Fofo at Atogan and Byron Ireland. Fofo in another season, his second with the Black Bears, first season for Ireland, hailing from Baltimore, Maryland. Yeah, Fofo is one of those very, very physical players, defensively and offensively. And he also just, uh, he just loves to play. I just love to watch his face. He's just having a good time out there when he's playing basketball. Well, Sandy, we touched on it, seeing a lot of smiles on the faces too, like a Steph Ingo is a very jovial type guy. Took a photo with him before the contest, Sandy. <laughs> and, uh, you're not a small person by any means, but he uh, definitely has a little height advantage on you. Well, I think I'm 5'6", and he's 6'9", so yeah. I, I wouldn't want to post him up at any time, that's for sure. But he's one of those guys, always a smile on his face, and so is uh, Fofo. He's yeah. just always pretty happy. Two very quality young men. I've gotten to know them a little bit in this last year or so, and uh, just quality young men. 12.45 left to go in the first half of play. Ball being swung around. Robin Duncan. Main fans might remember his brothers, Everett and Ernie. They were part of the first NCAA trio to make the NCAA and play in an appearance back in 2019. He's the last remaining Duncan left. It's kind of like the Black Bears men's ice hockey team in Korea's. Yeah. yeah, it was interesting to see all three of them out on the court a couple years ago together. Maine has had some struggles with Vermont. I know the uh, series history is fairly tight, a seven game edge, but 
Catamounts have really had the Black Bears numbers over the last five, six plus years. Well, it's been fun to watch the different rivalries change within the programs. I know when I was coaching here in the women's program, it was always Vermont. Vermont and, and New, New Hampshire, we were always big rivals. And then, of course, BU was in our conference at the time, and that was a big rival for us as well. Yeah, it kind of fluctuates a little bit. There's still always a little bit of amped upness whenever the Catamounts come to town, but hasn't necessarily been a rivalry in the postseason outside of the 1 8 matchup that we've seen a couple times over Maine and Vermont. Well, as we said earlier, Vermont's always been on top of that conference, number one. Fofo with the runner, doesn't get the bounce. Filipovic trying to get the rebound put back, but that's no good. Nice rebound by Fiorillo as uh, he's actually a Maine native hailing from Scarborough. So a little homecoming of sorts for him, though a little further south than here in Bangor. <laughs> and that putback is up and good for and Robin Fiorillo. Duncan. Oh, actually, that's uh, Fiorillo as uh, he gets his first basket. Fiorillo is a two-time Bangor Daily News, all Maine first team. Oh, good reverse attempt, no good. Still being batted around. Finally, it's Gibson who comes out with it for the Catamounts. Vermont wearing their green and yellow Road uniforms, Black Bears wearing their traditional home whites for this matchup. Deloney in underneath. Swung around, this one up, and that is good. Back to back it's baskets good. and five points. Uh, all first team, he was a high school all time leading scorer with 1,217 points. Yeah. And he's also, a Mr. he was a Mr. Maine basketball semifinalist. The only thing I have in common with that stat line is I think I had 17 points, but he had uh, 12. 100 more than I did back in <laughs> the old high school days. His team on top by 13 points early on. This one side rims off on the attempt. Yeah, There's Milos Nanadich in the contest. Yeah, Maine right now, Brian is only getting one shot. They're getting one long distance shot, unfortunately. And those long rebounds create transition for the Mar Vermont Catamounts. We see Masich back in. We also see Sam Iaquabu into the contest for the first time. Five-time America East Rookie of the Week. Got to imagine we'll see his name be uh, uttered at some point when they uh, unveil those all-rookie selections. A couple other Black Bears might be also in the mix. Uh, Byron Ireland. Yeah. Maybe we see Christian Fearbergs as well. I was actually looking at the uh, Rookie of the Weeks. Other than Justin Neely, there really hasn't been a lot outside of Black Bear freshmen uh, getting those Rookie of the Week honors. So. Imagine we might see maybe one or two Black Bears on that list at least. Well, you hope that means it's a good future for the Black Bears. Yeah. I also imagine, Sandy, uh, we might hear some Catamounts on that first team. I think maybe we'll hear Ryan Davis and Ben Shungu <laughs> at some point, maybe early on when they announce that first team. Well, again, they were both preseason all-conference, so it's, you know, it's always good to have a couple of preseason all-conference players on your team. Bailey Patella will commit the first Vermont Catamount foul. The uh, grad student from Lenox, Massachusetts. Got a little bit of the arm there of Byron Ireland as the freshman goes to the stripe. Black Bears just have two baskets from the floor, looking for some freebies now from the charity stripe. And that one will be front rimmed, a little short for Ireland. Black Bears right in the middle of the pack in free throw percentage in conference, 70.7% .7 clip. Good for fifth place. Catamounts, by the way, in case you're wondering, third, which usually bodes well for those close contests that you'll see in the Americas playoffs. Yeah, they've got some really good free throw shooters amongst their lineup. One of the most beautiful sounds in the game, that nice <laughs> swish there. Black Bears showing some backcourt pressure. Three in the backcourt. A little smaller lineup. Masic almost playing that four position. And a block. Nanadich says, get out of here. Then the quick outlet to Byron Ireland. Yeah, he drives Nan baseline. Nanadich is another freshman that's out of uh, Ontario. He also has a sister coming that the women have yeah. recruited and signed, a 6'3 player for the women's Black Bears team. Keeping up with the Nanaditches next year. Nice little crossover dribble. A oh, beautiful pass in. Fofo underneath the hole. Can't get it to drop, though, on an awkward angle as he goes careening to his backside. It's, it's almost if you, you wonder if he's almost too strong sometimes physically. Ooh, that was a tight one. I didn't know if that was actually going to make it up over the front rim, but they will say that's goaltending. Yeah, he pinned it to the rim, though. Mm. If, if he pinned it to the rim, does it have the possibility of going in? 
Yeah, I don't <laughs> think that would be coming down I, then, right? I don't think so. Yeah. I don't know. You, you can't call that unless that has a possibility of going into the circle of the rim. Yeah, I mean, it's semantics at this point. The basket counts, but officiating crews in the American East, I will say, have been incredible all season long. We've seen a lot of basketball games here in the state of Maine, and I give them all the credit. Well, when you leave a game and you don't remember who the officials <laughs> exactly. were, then they've done a good job. And most of these games this season, I, I don't remember who the three officials were. Here's the corner three right before the shot clock violation. Nana just barely misses it. Here comes Duncan, back out. Now that ball in. Fiorillo, now over to Deloney, and then back to the Scarborough native. Floater, runner, up, and good. He's got seven points, and he's loving playing in this state. <laughs> yeah, he's a 6'7 forward for the Catamounts. Red shirt sophomore. Here's Iaquaba. I believe his career high also was only four points, so he's past that. Figured you might see some more rotations for the Catamounts. That one good. What a soft touch on the hook from Nanaditch. Well, some of these younger players will get an opportunity in this game. He did have eight points earlier in the season. Has played sparingly since. That one careens off. Blackbeard's Iaquabu in to Filipovic. Off the window and in. Blackbeard's starting to get a little bit of momentum going after Peter now has four. Under eight to play in the first half. Still a lead of a dozen for the Catamounts who just make it look so easy and effortless. Well, they're so mechanical in their half-court sets. They just run, oh, <laughs> nice, no look. Pass by Delune, Deloney. Nick Fiorillo. Oh, Fiorillo with the basket, but you have to give the kudos where they are due to Deloney. Almost left me breathless, Sandy. That was an yeah. absolute pinbite sniper precision pass. Yeah, those are the beautiful parts of the game as far as I'm concerned. You can score all night long, but when you do those beautiful assists and those types of things. I'm gonna say it, Sandy, that's the best assist I've seen all season. Yeah, that, that was definitely a no-look pass. <laughs> and just another pretty play on the other side of things. Different variety, but what a trifecta by Nanaditch. Yeah, Nanaditch might surpass his career high too of eight points. They're staying with the Catamounts, though, trailing by double digits. So it's 11 points. Here's Duncan back over. Deloney. He'll pull up for the jumper. The three rattles down through. So a beautiful <laughs> assist and then a three on the other end. Yeah, not only can he make his teammates look good, but he looks pretty good himself on that sweet jump shot. First basket for him. Extends the lead up to 14. It's just what the Catamounts do all season long. Really just completely throttle you with their depth. Iquabu for three, almost banks it home. Filipovic with the rebound. The putback is up and good. Good effort, offensive rebound, padding the stats. It gets another two as he's up to six. Yeah, I think Filipovic is a player that just works so hard at both ends of the floor for the Black Bears. And what an improvement we've seen from even these last four games. Nice spin again, offensive excellence by both teams as Duncan gets on the score sheet with his first. This is just fun basketball to watch. It's almost like a pickup game where Maine knows their season's done after this one. Vermont's just fine tuning, seeing some other players out there. It's been a pretty clean basketball game, though, tending to skew more offensive. Iquabu can't get that one to drop and a rebound. Yeah, Maine has had some easy little layup shots that have gone in and out. Little. Too fancy, they don't go hard or anything, they just do it. Uh, they're so smooth in execution of their offenses. 18 points to Maine's eight. But Black Bears get back on the board again. Klonczyk gets his first bucket. He does have a rebound as well, so maybe not the best start for Max, but I'm sure he'll heat up as the game progresses too. Good little rotation here from both Becker and also uh, Stedman here on uh, Vermont Main respectively, getting some players into the contest that you might not normally see. That jumper missed from the corner. Main's Vukasin Masic with the rebound. Maine's got a little bit more size in the middle in the paint there against Vermont with, Ve with Fearsburg. 
Here's the drive, and Masic getting the open lane. Can't get the angle. The putback is no good. Now here goes the other way. They feed it into Davis, who just checked back in. Deshante Wright McLeish tried to save it, but tiptoed out of bounds. Yeah, tough, tough to save a ball going out of bounds at your opponent's basket. And if they had, if that, if he had not gone out of bounds, that would have been an easy layup for Vermont. Yeah, it's actually almost better that it was a whistle yeah, because just, Davis was about to throw another two-handed jam down. <laughs> yeah, just let it go out. Well, he still might get one. Backing down Fearbergs and gets it over the front iron and good for another bucket for him. Yeah, he's just so good. He just can get it done inside, outside. Good passer. Zidi, we talked about Ben Shungu being. Uh, you know, a little bit away. He's now 25 points away from 1,000. Ryan Davis eclipsed that mark earlier in the season, too. Again, the accolades continuing to pick up for uh, an outstanding team in Vermont. Here's Sullivan's three-point jumper from the wing. Missed Fearbergs with the rebound. Fearbergs hailing from Latvia, one of many nationalities represented on this roster. Oh, what a pass! Yeah, Fearbergs can't get that. Here's Christian Fearbergs at the line. Shot is up, and he misses it. Black Bears now one for three from the stripe so far. Having a little bit of struggles in this contest so far, but uh, not too bad at the, this point, as that's just the fourth attempt. That was one of your keys to victory for the Black Bears, just trying to get to the stripe a little bit more frequently. Looks like Fearbergs was holding his wrist too. Hopefully he didn't injure that on that little bump before the last break. Yeah, I think he, when he went down on the floor too, he, he got up holding onto his wrist a little bit. Gibson swinging it around. Shanku thought about the open look. Now he's going to take a contested. Almost like he wanted that hand in his face. <laughs> Davis battling for it, and then it'll be a foul. That'll be called on main. Both players jostling underneath, but it'll be Philly Povich getting the foul. Yeah, that, that's a tough one to decide who, who, the, who was grabbing more. <laughs> Again, I'm not one to, to question the calls there, but that one was maybe, that's a tough one. Well, you might let that go just to see who was going to Yeah, no one had get possession, possession really. Exactly. Again, that's why I'm over here and there wearing the stripes and getting paid to do so. <laughs> Again, I... As a former official yourself, Sandy, I understand the trials and tribulations <laughs> they have to go through. So I re well, nothing good, but respect. The good thing that, that I remember somebody telling me is that no official has ever refereed a perfect game, well, ever. As Shungu <laughs> bears the three, they say when a broadcaster has their perfect broadcast, they need to retire because that'll never happen again. Exactly. And also, they'll never have a perfect broadcast. I'm still waiting for my <laughs> even near perfect broadcast. That one's a miss by Masich. Rebound pulled down by Powell. Quickly out to Gibson, being guarded by Klonczyk. Here's Sullivan with it. 18 on the shot clock. The other thing about the Catamounts, they really haven't been working that shot clock down too far. This one pops out, Filipovich with it. Little underhand toss, Masic to Klonczyk, wide open from the corner, in and out. And the rebound's pulled down by Shungu. And once again, which has happened all season long, Maine's getting good looks. They're just not falling. Another one through for Shungu. This of the more close-knit variety. He's got five quick points there. Now double digits, 20 away from 1,000. Here's the drive in, the up, the no good. Klonczyk can't get it. And then the foul is called as Masic heads to the stripe on a tough, hard-fought bat. Yeah, again, the, uh, you've got to love the way the Black Bears battle. They're going hard in there. They're, Right I'll now, you know, Vermont's playing consistently well from every position that's out there on the court. Just so deep. And a lot of these players, too, getting that extra COVID year, decided, you know what, we're going to come back, especially after the uh, bad taste probably in their mouth of not making it to the championship game a year ago and watching the, the uh, Hartford Hawks make it. They've always got so many variables that uh, come into effect. When you come back for another year, you just hope and pray that you don't get injured, that you're able to just get better and better and come through it as a team to reach your goals. It's also amazing, too. John Becker has made three NCAA appearances, two NITs, three CBIs in the last 11 years. The only two times they haven't made a postseason tournament, 2020, and we all know why. But on the other side of things, last year, because they did not make the NCAA tournament, elected not to take that W, the, not W, uh, sorry, go women's basketball <laughs> break. Uh, did not elect to go with the NIT bid because of the circumstances revolving the pandemic, and you respect that decision too. 
Well, one of the interesting stats I think about John Becker's coaching is probably, I'm sure, early on in his career, he was an assistant at Gallaudet, yeah. which is the only four-year liberal arts school for the deaf. Yeah. That might have been, that must have been a very interesting coaching stint. And there's an interesting little tie-in to Gallaudet in the Bangor area where we're broadcasting from here today. That's actually, uh, or I'm not sure if they still are, but Hassan University, which resides in Bangor as well, D3 institution, that's a shot clock violation here, good defense by Maine. Uh, Hudson football actually plays them quite frequently too and watching their football games, it's so unique where they're using signals and signs as well. As you see Max Klonczyk with some great D. Yeah, I think probably every single athletic team should play a team like that just yeah. so they can experience, you know, sometimes we take for granted all the abilities that we have and uh, when we get to see a team like that play with an inability to hear, that's amazing. Diavrillo gets the rebound starting to pick up the stat sheet a little bit. Got nine points already. I'm sure he's got some family here today. Yeah, I was. we were talking with the sports information director. Five rebounds, by the way, for him as well. That one missed by uh, Cam Gibson. Yeah, May needs to capitalize here on Vermont's misses because they're not going to miss very much. We were talking with uh, sports information director Ryan Manley, and he said, I think he's the only player on the roster that actually asked for comp tickets. It's <laughs> that one up and good for Fearburgs. You know, that's what I'd like to see Fearsburg have done more of all year long, is get in the paint and bang around with that big body. 36-22 score. The deep three. Shungu can't get that bounce to fall this time around. Nice rebound for Udatogan. They swing it over to Konchek. It's been a little quiet here today, just with two points, but I imagine this second half will be electric for Max. Black Bears looking for maybe the last shot. It's about a two second differential between shot and game clock currently. Little tussle off the basket, but off the ball as well. So that'll be a foul on uh, Fiorillo. Yeah, I think it's interesting too. You have, unfortunately, the number 10 team in the conference and the number one team in the conference and you know just they've got to be able to stay focused both teams have got to be jumped in in that matchup but we'll keep an eye on that one and get ready for America East playoffs on both the men's and women's side this weekend here's Klonchek drives in the lane the up and under what a nice move for Max now with four points three seconds left over to Gibson trying to get one off before the buzzer and he's rejected the end of recruiting and uh, you've got to make sure you make those decisions and make sure you have the right person for the job. Director of Athletics, Ken Ralph, on a recent interview on a local radio station had uh, mentioned that he's had a lot of interest and a lot of interest from the beginning in that position too, from some surprising names as well, as Shungu gets that one up and through. Shungu's having a very nice game so far today as Vermont hits the 40 point mark. Well, I think every every head coach, every person that goes into a head coaching position, Brian, wants to be the one who puts a program back on the map and gets this program. This Maine has never gone to the mm. NCAAs. You'd love to be that coach who makes sure that they can get to the NCAAs for the first time. Yeah, never made it. They've uh, come close a couple of times. There's a little body bump there. Masic, just a little too overzealous on that one. Maine has made it to the conference championship four times since 1980 but have yet to taste victory in one of those four matchups to this point. Well, there's obviously some building to do, building up of this program to do, um, and everybody wants to think that they're the person to do it. Uh, Maine's a tough sell, it's, it's a tough sell. I mean, I was an assistant coach here for a long time, even in the women's program, to get uh, athletes to come up here, and but also you sell them a good culture, you sell them a good program, and they'll, they'll you build it and they'll come, so to speak. Davis now the double digit mark with his ninth and 10th point on that bucket. Couple schools within this conference, is that one no good? Rebound, chase down. Who have yet to uh, taste that dancing action, so to speak, in the NCAA tournament. Maine and New Hampshire, two state schools, though, that are both looking for their first appearance. New Hampshire has a chance to buy for that here coming up, start this weekend. This one no good, follow up, it's gonna be knocked away. Gibson losing the handle of it, it'll stay with the Catamounts. Well, with the possibility of a new facility within about five years here on the University of Maine campus, um, I think that right now the administration is thinking that they want to put a lot more emphasis on this men's basketball program, as rightfully they should. Um, they want to get a winning product to be able to put in a beautiful new facility if indeed 
that'll be happening in five years. So again, um, it would be nice to see this men's program excel and do as, as good as the women's program has done at the University of Maine. Of course, the Catamounts, as we know, six game lead over the next closest team in UMBC right now for second place. So they are the class. I think that's pretty well sto uh, noted. Another block there from Steph Ingo. And here comes Mosic. He's got numbers. He's going to go all in on him with himself, but no good. The follow up, though, as Ingo has it bounced to him. And that is up and through for a bucket. First for Ingo, by the way. Surprising. He's been doing a lot of things off the ball, though, that have been very exciting and productive. I believe that might have been his second block of the game. But just going back to that point here, Sandy, this conference is probably, outside of Vermont, has been the closest it's been in parity in many, many, many years. But the Black Bears just on the other side of looking in here at this point. That one's going to be a miss. Davis with the rebound. But I know this is going to be such an interesting offseason, too, not just for the main basketball program. Hartford's going to go into some flux. They'll be leaving the America East. And, of course, another member school also leaving in Stony Brook. Be interesting to see how uh, the America East evolves in the next couple of years as well. Well, it'll be interesting to see who they bring in to replace those teams. And there have been several teams mentioned. Yeah. yeah, we'll see exactly who might be joining the conference, but it'll be a fun offseason. Another block, by the way, for the Black Bears. Here's Mosic now with it. 42-26 yard score. Klonch check hands it off to Deshante Wright McLeish. Now here's Klonch check again. Losing the handle. Going down, getting down on the floor. What a nice effort there for Isaiah Powell. Also getting in the mix. Shungu getting in the pile. Good show of sportsmanship, though. Gonna love to see that. Is Masic helping up Shungu. Kudos again for uh Powell there, a senior, in a game where they're handily on top, just going out there and hustling for every loose ball. Yeah, may, uh, Vermont not only excels at the offensive end, but they really, really hustle when the ball's loose on the floor. They play really good man-to-man -man defense. Oh, Powell gets stripped, though. Klonch check. Over. Masic for three. Misses it. Two Black Bears in the vicinity. Filipovic with the rebound. Mosic thought about another three, the other side of the court. Instead, gets it over to right make leash, who buries it. Yeah, and again, good team passing, good team. I mean, Mosic had a good, clear look at the basket, but he kicked it off to McLeish right instead. Right McLeish instead. Main actually outscoring the Catamounts in the second half, five to four. So silver linings as you look forward to. We always look for the little wins within a yeah. within a game. 13-point advantage, so the Black Bears aren't out of this contest by any means, especially with just under 16 to play. Ryan Davis, though, trying to extend the lead. That high-arcing shot will be rebounded off the rebound by Shungu. Well, going into halftime, Maine had a little bit of a run with some of Vermont's misses, but they've got to continue to keep going. those runs going. Davis, though, a more high-percentage shot this time around, right okay. underneath the hoop, and he gets it to drop. Extends the lead back up to 15. Yeah, he's a player that's always around the basketball. Shango with a steal. Dishes it over. Sullivan right towards the right side of the rack. And two more points for the Catamounts, and Sullivan's first. One thing I like about this Vermont team is they stay within themselves. They don't try to do anything fancy. They, they're, they're just playing smart, aggressive, fundamental defense. They work their half-court sets in their offense. Nice screen set by Ingo. He gets the ball fed, then dishes it back out to Clunch. Jack, he misses that three-pointer. Falling away from the hoop. Sullivan over. Chungu missing short, trying to get the rebound. A little tussle. Again, surprised that wasn't a foul, Sandy. A little bit of a bump there. And now this one loose. Yeah, Vermont's been taking it hard to the rim, but Maine's been protecting that paint a lot better towards this uh, the beginning of this second half. Steph Ingo, though, well off the block totals for his career best. He had six versus UConn. Box out underneath, Ingo got pushed out by Duncan. Yeah, Maine's just not right now, they're not taking their opportunities. They're taking advantage of their opportunities that Vermont's giving them, really. 18 points was the, the best mark so far for lead for Vermont. Maine has not led in this contest at all. Another foul here called on the Black Bears. Klonchek picks up his first. Coach Becker 
barking out signals here. Catamounts, of course, favored in this matchup here versus the Black Bears, but Maine showing some good heart to stick with it. That's a good basketball, nice feed again. Precision passing has been on display from both teams, but another great one in the finish by Deloney. Yeah, and again, this Vermont team just communicates so well without having to say anything. They, you know, they, they know where each other's cutting. They're just fundamentally so sound. Very impressed with this Catamount team all season long. I think they were a little rubbed the wrong way on their loss to Hartford at Chase Family Pavilion. But uh, have not lost since and on a nice win streak right now. On a four game winning streak right now, looking to make it five with tonight's contest if they can, help, if they can hang on. Had a 14 game winning streak earlier before that Hartford Hawks loss. So uh, just shows you what they have the penchant for when they're playing good basketball. Well, you take a look at their out of conference losses. Number 21, Maryland, they only lost by nine points. Yeah. To number 21, Maryland. Uh, they lost to Oakland, 63-61, uh, again a close game. They lost to University of North Carolina, uh, I believe it was Greenville, 54-51, to and then they lost at Providence by 10. That's their biggest yeah. loss margin was 10 points to Providence. <laughs> and that Catamount team just won the Big East regular season title, so. <laughs> the Providence team. Yeah. 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 So uh, not a bad team to lose to by 10 points, no. by any means. Oh. Fed in, Duncan almost had an open, more open look. He'll miss that one on the back iron. Here come the Black Bears rebounding it. Klonczyk over to Ireland, lowers the shoulder, and that's an offensive foul. That's a good call right there. Not sure what the second whistle. I don't know if they teed up Stedman or a player, but anytime you lower the shoulder like that, you can understand it. It does look like it is going to be a technical foul. And it will be called on Atatoga as he'll check out, and we'll see Iquabu in the contest. Fans not too pleased with the officials here today. Yeah, but you do hate to see, you know, Maine. You want Maine to go out again in the last game of the season with, you know, high class character and integrity, which they've done all season long. You just hate to see it. It's just frustration at this point. And, uh, and but again, there's been some uh, questionable calls. Right, and, and you know Fofo. He's, uh, yeah, he's, he's not a, he's usually a nice the guy, guy you would. He's probably one of the last people you would say gets yeah. the technical, but uh, nonetheless. He, they, he's been getting, it's been pretty physical out there for him because he's a physical player, but there, I'm, I'm going to say, you know, there's been three or four calls that have been a little bit questionable. Deloney hits one and uh, misses the second. Get some topical references now from our uh, fans as well on some main high school athletes. Well, it's just nice to see the fans getting into the game. <laughs> I don't know if it's an NCAA recruiting violation if I can even utter the uh, basketball player's name. Foul called here. And a bucket Ireland. and the harm for Byron Ireland. It's a good to come back with a score. I, you know, you got problems out there on the court with some, always come back with scoring. Ireland's been a nice player to watch. Love to see how he grows as a player too. This is a freshman. He's a freshman out of Annapolis. Maryland is named Rookie of the Week earlier in the season. Would not be surprised to possibly see his name up there on the all-rookie list whenever they announce that. I imagine they'll announce that on Friday or Saturday. And there's a lot more energy here in this uh, audience <laughs> here today than we normally see for men's basketball games, too. A little frustration brewing out from the uh, Black Bear faithful. Here's Duncan with the ball, feeds it in. Yeah, oh. just getting that one swatted away. Not an official block, but more of a steal. Lob pass into Wright McLeish. Now back out, Ireland with it. 12.20 left on the clock. Shot clock down to 16. Here's the screen set by Turgut. Iquabu pull up jumper in the lane. Good, nothing but net for Sam Iquabu, a likely American East rookie. A nice shot, he just elevated really, really quickly. Should say all rookie. Lost the word there for a second. <laughs> oh, wow, I, I don't think he said anything, did he? He just. And I think that's a, is that another technical too, Sandy? Yep. I believe it was. That's gonna be yeah. on the freshman Iquabu and just the frustration here. I'm not so sure if he said anything. He just kind of put his arms up as if questioning the call, but he didn't, I don't believe he said anything. Turgut also gets called for the foul. 
Yeah, just I don't know what the word was said. It could have been maybe something off color. Maybe that prompted it. Who knows? But uh, see the official to our right off camera here, just talking with Turgid, just kind of going over some things. As it'll be Deloney again doing uh, the free throw duties for this technical. Yeah, I think right now the players are just trying to play and they're playing hard. Um, you know, I think the referee should just referee the game and not to have too many rabbit ears going on here, <laughs> just referee the game. A little changeover, it'll actually be Ryan Davis getting the uh, free throw attempts, two for two, make it three for three and 13 points, a Baker's dozen for the big fella. <laughs> Happy birthday, uh, heckle by the pep band also seems to have lost its energy <laughs> over there. <laughs> yeah. I will say the pep band comes up with some good ones though occasionally, and you know, yeah. he, he, you talk sportsmanship and stuff, but you know something, it's the college basketball atmosphere. You, you should be having some fun. You just gotta make sure that uh, you're doing it in a reasonably good way. Now Deloney, as this game has really screeched to a halt here recently. It had been going at a pretty good, nice pace, Sandy, but uh, we've kind of screeched. Well, I, you know, I hate to say this, but I think as a former official and as a former coach, I can say this. You have some it, credence, it, yeah. It, it yeah. happens sometimes when the officials get too involved in the game. You know, just don't interfere with the game. You can interrupt it occasionally, but don't interfere with the game. And I think we've had a few calls that have done that, and which has caused a little bit of the game to kind of not be quite as smooth as it was. By the way, just on a good note here, Shungu, uh, Ben Shungu, who entered the game 30 points away, just entered the contest again. He's getting closer and closer to that 1,000 mark. I wonder if you might be able to do that in the quarterfinal matchup, whomever that may be, as he's uh, 18 points away from that now. Nice move from Turgut, and hopefully he gets the shooting foul because he was underneath the basket, unable to do so. We'll sort this one out when we come back. Two shots coming up for Ada Turgut. Broadcast booth, Umaine runs on Duncan. Under 12 minutes to play, out of Turgut. We'll be shooting some free throws coming out of this break. Still looking for his first points of the game, main led by the six points of Peter Filipovich. It's uh, Davis with 14, 12 for Shungu to lead the way for the Catamounts. The only two players in double digits in this contest. Turgut up and good. Well, you take a look at the free throws. Uh, Maine, uh, they're five for eight now with that shot, and Vermont's only six for eight, so not a lot of going to the free throw line today. Here's Turgut's second. Other than the Vermont broadcast <laughs> position, you could <laughs> not hear anything but the ball being dribbled. And sometimes that's effective <laughs> when we're on the free throws. More than yeah. the noise sometimes, the silence sometimes can affect free throws. When I was coaching in Michigan, we had a player that wore hearing aids, and when she got to the free throw line at an opponent's gym, she would turn her hearing aids off. I'll <laughs> give uh, I, no, nothing bad to say. I believe the play-by-play uh, -play voice is Brian McLaughlin over there. No, no bad will will. He's going to do his job too. So. Another foul call, more free throws coming up as it'll be none other than Cam Gibson towing the line once more. He's uh, finally going up to the stripe, taking his time. Sandy, this was like one of the first, quickest first halves I've seen in basketball and maybe arguably the slowest second half I've seen in basketball It seems before. to be. There's been uh, some questionable calls, yep. some Officials getting together to discuss things. It does seem like the second half has slowed down a little bit. Second free throw is missed. Loose ball scrum. And also, honestly, Sandy, not to pile on. Pretty quick tie up too. <laughs> Maybe. Well, again, I think they're they're sensing a little bit that they're losing a little bit of control of this game, and they're probably trying to get it back. But there's no real animosity between these two teams. I don't. No, I not really. Seen. They're playing yeah. clean basketball and. I mean, a lot of respect. Uh, Vukas and Masic picked up Shungu after he got dropped on the ground earlier on a good hustle play. That was missed. As Patella can't get that to drop, Blackbeard's working quickly down the court. Lipovic, nice double hesitation. Free throw's coming up. 
Might have bumped his head there. Hopefully he's okay. I think he might have bumped his, his head on the player's knee. Yeah. So, foul called on the native Mainer. That'll be called on, of course, Fiorillo. Yeah, and again, Maine has got to take advantage of these free throw shots. And when the clock is stopped, you've got to take advantage of that, especially against a team like Vermont. Fiorillo comes out of the contest. Ryan Davis back in. Getting some good minutes here today, kind of getting in form too. He's still coming back from that injury that sidelined him for a few contests. Running the baseline we go. Yeah, Davis has had a very quiet 14 points for this game and five rebounds. Score 53-36, Vermont on top with 11.04 left to go in this contest. Here's Shungu at the top of the key going against Filipovic. Spin move, he's still in the lane. Yeah, that should be three seconds. Not sure if his foot was there or not, just looking for the vantage point. Deep three-pointer and bam. Cam Gibson hitting it. 56-36 our score, this one inside the arc, no good. Six points, by the way, for Gibson. Shunku trying to add up some more points, and he does so right on cue there. A couple of Vermont's players have a tendency to dribble hard to their defensive player and just kind of put their shoulder down, create some contact. Shunku now up to 14 points. This shot up by Ireland and buried. He's had a good game so far, five points. Score now 58 to 38. 20 point advantage for the Catamounts in their final tune up before the America East playoffs. Cross court pass. Swung over to Duncan. Back over Gibson. And knocked away. Davis kind of looking perplexed as the, where did that go? <laughs> yeah, Davis just kind of very nonchalant, relaxed, playing relaxed basketball out there. At the toe gun, right McLeish and Ingo check in for Filipovic, Turgut, and Klonch check. Well, hopefully that uh, right McLeish and Fofo have kind of gotten their issues cleared up. Well, it was, uh, I think it was Iaquabu who got the uh, technical, not right McLeish. But same sort of thing. Wait, was that a shot clock violation? Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, will be a foul here as uh, more free throws coming. I, I thought I heard a buzzer sound. This game is uh, eluding me as well, Sandy. So. Well, it, there's no flow right now. In the first half, there was some flow to the game. This second half, there's just no flow to the game. It's being interrupted too much by um, free throws. <laughs> um, and just some sloppy play out there right now. Score now 59-38. Davis connects, he's been perfect, six for six. Gibson checks out. And Davis also is Sullivan and uh, we see uh, Fior Fiorillo back in the contest again. Black Bears continue to battle here and they've still got nine and a half minutes left to go in this game to chip away at this. Ireland for three. Back iron miss. Just to call space pit. I could have I could have seen an uh, offensive foul called on uh, <laughs> Stefingo there over yeah, the back. Yeah, he was definitely over the back on this one. I want to be as objective as possible. That one up and no good. Rebound. See a black bears there. Right McLeish comes down with it. Being harassed by Shungu. 60 to 38 our score. Vermont on top. Just over nine minutes left to play. Masich calling out the signs, gets it over to Wright McLeish, now over to Adetoga. Masich, that's a tie up. Ooh, and a little bit of an extra little, maybe uh, elbow there, as uh, Patella doesn't feel very good. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it was anything on purpose. No. He was just moving his arms around. A little inbound the ball, check back in. I do appreciate they checked in with us, though. It's always <laughs> good. The officials have done a really good job throughout the year just making sure that we're 
kind of updated through some of the reviews. Runner up and good for Fofo at Toga. Nice move there towards the hole for Fofo. Well, it is always important for us to give that information to the viewer, but most of the officials have been staying on top of that all year. Oh, another block. Fofo <laughs> says, I want into the block party. Fofo, the, a 6'1 oh. sophomore out of Saskatchewan. Built like a football halfback, just yes. skied to block that shot. You know what? I'll give credit here. Fofo, the score, and then on the other end, watch him hunt his prey. <laughs> just happened to be the main native, Nick Fiorillo. There's been some sweet block shots here today. I will tonight. say, the uh, the main fans in attendance, the score might be a 20-point deficit, 60 to 40 right now. They've still got their money's worth in terms of blocks and some really fun play. Yeah, they've seen some good fundamental basketball from both teams. It's been a good basketball game, some good offense. We've had 100, 100 points scored. Elbow jumper missed by Iaquabu. Rebound pulled down by Patella. And Maines, again, Maines getting open looks. Haven't seen them have too many wide open layups, but they're getting open eight to 10 foot jumpers. Eight minutes left in this contest. Here's the drive in. Swung around. Finds his way back to Shungu. Now over to the corner for three. No good. <laughs> Fiorillo is uh, just, he basically took the shot, did not move an inch from that corner. <laughs> I love that. He was just ready to either go up for an alley oop or ready to take another three point shot. Shot clock already down to five seconds. That's going to be a miss. And right on cue, the Scarborough guy with another two point basket. And, then, and Ireland was right there against him and uh, he should have put a body on him, but he snuck in there for the rebound. Up and in, Iaquabu for two. Yeah, nice pass from. Nice pass from Ireland. Quick moving, trying to get into shot bad from beyond the arc, but when you are so dominant inside like you've seen here today, why shoot the long range shot when you get those high percentage <laughs> ones all over the map? Ooh, Iaquabu goes down. I don't know if he slipped. We'll see if he's okay. Hate to see that, but uh, rebound put back, no good. Yeah, Target, and then the rebound pulled down that time around by George Lefebvre. Looks like he started to do a little bit of an inside-outside dribble, yeah. and he got his feet caught up. Score 62 to 42, Vermont on top by 20, 637 remaining in this contest. Keep you updated on the score while we get those graphics back out there for you. This one up and through. Uh, Delaney, or Deloney rather, I should Deloney apologize, gets the three point bucket, his second of the night. Well, he's not bad, he's a 38% three point shooter. And you can just see it's like death by a thousand, <laughs> baskets by a thousand different players, really. Vermont just so deep. Well, Vermont is one of the better three point shooting teams in the America East. They're shooting right around 36.1% from the three point line. And Atogan gets another basket. Pretty good scoring game on both sides. Of course, Vermont with the edge. 21 point advantage, 65-44. Shot clock down to 10. Ball in the possession of Gibson. Yeah, well, I, there was a lot of traveling. Look, I thought I was watching the NBA there for a minute. Uh, yeah. Gibson was taking two or three steps with while he had the ball. Shot tap, no good. Iquabu dishes it over. Right big leash, three pointer from the corner, no good. Rebound by Deloney. 5.30 left to go in this contest. 65-44, our score. I'm trying to think, what's uh, what's four or something? I know triple, quadruple. Quadruple, quadruple. Blackbeard's yeah, coming go. in. I was going to say quintet, but <laughs> that didn't work either. <laughs> quartet, quartet of Black Bears. Oh, wow. There you go, I got that one. Hard foul here. Oh, that doesn't look... Does not look good here. Well, Hopefully. he's being helped up, so he should be okay. Yeah. Probably a little bit more embarrassed than anything. He's got a little bit of a Turgut gets the Turgut. foul. Good to see Sullivan, who was dealing with some injuries earlier in the conference slate. Actually missed that Hartford loss due to injury. It's good to see him get up and be able to take these free throws. There's such a different feel to this game right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, some more negative energy here, yeah. I think, as of late. But, but again, I think the interruptions, um, you know, you can interrupt a game occasionally, but you really shouldn't interfere with a game occasionally. And that's what I'd stop. There's been so many starts and stops in the second half. The flow is just not there. Sullivan misses the first. He's got the second coming up. 
up and through. Nothing but net there. Pinpoint precision for Sullivan, who now has three on the score sheet. Over five to play, 66-44 our score. Ireland going 101 with Deloney. Spin, can't get it through. Will be a rebound, uh, actually I should say a foul called on Deloney here. The junior from Portland, foul Oregon, not Portland, Aaron Maine. Deloney. Two Portlands and he's on the West Coast version. Number zero, Byron Ireland. As Ireland goes to the stripe. Makes that is up. That makes six points for him today. Nice uh, little evening for the freshman here in his final game of his first season. Sullivan checks out. Probably a wise move for Coach Becker and company, making sure you can protect that asset moving forward. That is up and through. Black Bears show some backcourt pressure here. Duncan back to Deloney, being guarded by Iquabu. 20 on the shot clock. Game clock reads 441. Score 66-46, 20 point advantage for the Catamounts. Yeah, Vermont really spreads their offense. And their offensive half court sets, they really spread their offense out, almost like a five out. Jumper from the wing, no good. Gibson can't get it. Deloney with the rebound. He goes right towards the hole, block. Also some contact there too. Deloney looks frustrated and deservedly so. And then Iquabu's heels were off on the sidelines and out of bounds with 4.15 left to go. Yeah, right now you just want to see this game played safely <laughs> with yeah. nobody walking away from here getting hurt. In Especially with the Catamount, such high aspirations for hoisting that America East Championship at the end. Uh, fingers crossed there are no injuries. Not to say that it's getting chippy, just physical yeah, play. No, I, I think this is a game that's been very well played. It's been clean play throughout it. It's just been some questionable calls and made the flow interrupted a few times. So Deloney goes in, decides to dish it to the big fella and he's blocked away. Another block on Fiorillo. Shot clock down to two. And nothing but net. The dagger from Deloney. And that was Ingo's fourth block of the game. Cold-blooded. Aaron Deloney. Answer back. Maine has been pretty successful when they've attacked the rim and gone into the paint. Lepovich with another bucket. He leads the way now, 11 points. Actually, beg your pardon, nine points. 20 point lead, Duncan's just gonna hold it. I don't hate this call too, just to kind of kill a little bit more time. A little push off though, again. If the game had been a little tighter, you might have seen that one. I think they're now letting some of these go through, but goes off the end line, 68, 48, 305 left to go. We step aside and come back with the final 305 coming up. Back in Bangor, 68-48. Our score here in this contest, Vermont on top. And the final game before the America East playoffs begin on Sunday. Vermont comes up empty, Iaquabu going in the lane. Or, whew. And again, just the story of this game, Sandy. He tries to make a cross-court pass, careens off the side of the backboard. Unlucky <laughs> on that one. That's. Uh, speaking of across the pond, over in London, uh, played some soccer a couple times, football as they say, and whenever a player would miss, he would always go unlucky, and that was one of those situations. Well, unfortunately, Maine's had a few of those tonight. Yeah. Also, big news for the Black Bears, too. Um, not, not a bad little trip to jaunt across the pond, as they say. They'll leave the States, and they'll be uh, 
playing the Naismith Classic in London at one of the most famous and busiest arenas in the world. Uh, by the way, Nick Fiorillo uh, having a game. Yeah, that was, that was uh, I think his 14th point right there. Having a great game, already has his career best mark, which prior was eight. Ingo trying to throw that one down, goes down to the flo floorboards. It was nice to see uh, Duncan go over and help <coughs> Stefan Ingo yeah. have a little bit of respect, I think, for, for the upperclassmen. I was about to say, there really is no animosity between these two teams to, in my eyes here. There might be some frustrations brewing from the seasons or the contest, but. No, I haven't seen any dirty play out there no. on, on this court tonight at all. Again, we're a little bit further removed. We don't get to hear everything like the officials, so that might not be the case. But from our vantage point, it seems like it's been, uh, seems well, like it has been as chippy as other games. There's definitely been some comments. <laughs> oh, I'm sure there, yeah, of course, yeah. And I'm sure the technical fouls are probably warranted a little closer to the action, but. Uh, nonetheless, going back to that point, though, uh, Maine will be going over to London to play a game in December of this year, and uh, that's got to be quite an honor, especially for a lot of these foreign players who, who uh, hail from Europe. It'll be a chance for some of their family members to uh, make the trek over to jolly old England and see that. Of course, we'll be taking on the Red Foxes of Marist. Also, in that classic will be Kentucky taking on Michigan, so it should be a pretty interesting uh, couple of games over for some people who don't necessarily get to see college basketball. At well, least I'll alive and in, in person. I'll definitely be rooting for my Michigan Wolverines, unless, of course, <laughs> they play the Black Bears. Well, it's only going to be two games. Uh, you won't see any of those Power 5 schools taking on the mid-majors, but it should be interesting nonetheless. Your Michigan Wolverines, Sandy. Oh, dagger two-point <laughs> deep for Wright McLeish. You switched allegiances, huh? <laughs> oh, no, I'll always be a main Black Bear. <laughs> Oh, sure. I, but I also was a Wolverine for four years. Yeah, so. it's true. <laughs> Assistant with uh, Coach Trish Roberts. She taught Chris Weber everything he knows. That's what she says. <laughs> well, <at least>. except <laughs> I gave him a hard time one day when I was rebounding for him on free throws. He, yeah. I said, Chris, you're going to make more money in yeah. one year in the NBA than I'm going to make in my lifetime. You can't make free she, throws. She did not say how to call timeouts, though. She did not <laughs> teach that lesson. That was, no. that was missing. No, but he named his clothing company Time Out, so at least yeah, he had a sense his, of humor <laughs> about it. <laughs> nice bucket there for Max Klonschek, 71-54 our score. Just uh, 72 seconds left on the clock before this one is over, and we can close the books on the regular season for both teams and close the year for the Black Bears. Nice effort there for Deloney. He's, he's showing a little frustration here as of late. Ray McLeish trying to throw another one up, no good. Fofa to Toga with a nice offensive board. And then a foul called there as uh, Lefebvre will be called for that one. 55.5 seconds before this one mercifully is finished. Well, you've got to you've give both teams credit. They're still battling hard, yeah. still working hard. <coughs> Fofo going hard after the rebound. One of the longest non-overtime games I can remember in duration. Fofo gets that one up and through. Nice night for Fofo as well. Yeah, we're looking Har at almost a two-hour game here tonight. <laughs> yeah, we're getting close to that 9 o'clock hour. Of course, next Black Bear basketball game will be on the women's side. Um, that'll be on Saturday, the game you can see here on uh, the ESPN family in, of networks, the platform, either three or plus. I'm not sure if that determination has been made yet. Be the opponent has yet to be determined, too. Right, that'll be a 1 o'clock game in the pit. Nice move, Lefebvre. Good work underneath, drawing the foul and the points. Got his teammates up off the bench applauding for him. Main battling back uh, have uh, gotten within 20, so that's that's sort of one of, those, um, <laughs> one of those marks you like to hit. You like to see that. Getting within 20 points to a, a team the caliber of Vermont. You see LeVave here. He only averages about 2.9 minutes per game, so his teammates were cheering for him to score. And a nice show of respect here by the main fans, giving Wright McLeish and Steph Ingo a nice round of applause. Don't know what the future holds for those two young gentlemen, but with the coaching change and um, their status too, well, a nice show of support. Don't know whether or not we'll see them in a Black Bear uniform again. 
Well, they both have represented the university very, very well. Quality young men. 30 seconds on the game clock. Shot clock now rating 24. I assume that Vermont probably won't take the final shot. They might just take it out. <laughs> Say it is like I'm gonna touch the I'm gonna touch the back, but I just having wanna make sure the second time it's not a foul. Having a conversation yeah. with the referee while he's playing defense in front of you. No, I get that. I I respect that though. He it just shows the kind of jovialness yeah. too. Yeah. It's gonna be He just enjoys the game. He, he, I love to see that in a player playing hard, working hard, you know, and enjoying the game. Winning or losing, he's enjoying the game. So free throws coming up, eight seconds. Big free throws too, Sandy. Big free throws. Well, he has, uh, Lefebvre has a career high four times of two points. Vermont coming into this, according to the ESPN app, 20 point favorite. So, a chance to put them to 20 points in this one. Right now it's an 18 point game with eight seconds remaining. Shot is up, no good. So barring a put back in, Maine will be within 20. And that is through. 19 point game with eight seconds left to go. Black Bears will bring this one up the floor. We'll see if they maybe take a final shot or they'll just uh, elect to take this one out. Again, good show of respect. Uh,